Special correspondent Kat Wise reports on a new university program training students to become human rights investigators in the digital age. These students are part of the recently launched Human Rights Investigations Lab at the University of California Berkeley's Human Rights Center. We've noticed over and over that there are a number of frontline human rights advocates that are really trying to figure out how do you ensure that the videos they're getting from survivors on the ground are what they purport to be? The university and partner organization Amnesty International are training the students to verify videos and other publicly available social media content coming out of areas like Syria. I think it has a lot to do with my background um, coming from Egypt and then being affected by the political scene uh, in the country and having your life upended. Let's turn our attention to the robots and making them the best athletes we can. Meet Salto, a battery-powered robotic leg that jumps faster and higher than all the rest. Salto jumps over a meter high and can jump repeatedly like a pogo stick thanks to onboard stabilizers. Biologists have found in specialized jumping animals is that they have this special crouch posture where their muscles have more time to load a bunch of energy into stretchy tendons, and then they release that energy to jump really high. Uh, there weren't any robots made using that idea. We were able to show that with this new jumping strategy, you can get better performance than like any other robot could. Welcome to Sunday Night. I'm Megan Kelly. They call it surgery on a cell, and it just might end up changing life as we know it. She's a biologist at the University of California, Berkeley. Jennifer Doudna. And she's talking about a discovery that has made her an international science celebrity. How about the invention of a tool that can edit the genetic fate of almost anything alive? I'd go to PTA meetings for my son's school, or I'd have my neighbor over for dinner, and I realized, wow, you know, people outside of my little science world have no idea what's going on, and yet this is going to impact everybody's lives. Scientists uh, in the climate realm teamed up with economists, the, the dismal science meeting climate science, if you will, and they looked at the economic impacts of climate change as you project out to the future. And perhaps the most interesting finding was that climate change will hit different socioeconomic classes differently. In the south, where it's hot and along the coast, we might see populations losing the equivalent of 20% of their income. Whereas in the cooler northern and western regions, we actually see that populations might benefit a little. And because the north is, tends to be wealthier and the south tends to be poorer, what we see is that in the future, climate change is going to increase economic inequality within the United States. From the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. New at 6, NASA is looking for help on a special space mission. UC Berkeley researcher Dr. Aaron Meisner says there are so many things in the sky, they need help examining them. So NASA and Cal have teamed up to create Backyard Worlds, a crowdsourcing project in which individuals are sent still pictures from a different tiny piece of the galaxy to examine for any signs of movement. But actually, people are really good at finding motion in crowded scenes, so that's what we're trying to leverage here. Better than computers sometimes? Oh yeah, definitely. You're watching PBS. Marion Diamond is one of the founders of modern neuroscience. When you see a lady with a hat box, you don't know what she's carrying. Do you? <laughs> and there you are. She joined a team of three University of California Berkeley researchers who were looking for evidence that the brain is affected by one's environment. Our most important finding showed that with enrichment, the brain increased dimensions, and with impoverishment, it decreased. A 6% difference. Nobody else had made such measurements and found these results. We were terribly excited about it. This is ABC 7 News. UC Berkeley is about to have its commencement ceremonies every year 
a few students stand out. And this time we met a U.S. Army Reserve Captain with a mission, and that is to tell the story of U.S. military veterans who've been deported. Captain Joe Bush, a former U.S. Army soldier and Marine, at 36, soon to have a master's degree from the UC Berkeley Graduate School of Journalism. His experience in the military and what he's learned at Cal have helped him to create videos that highlight issues pertaining to veterans. Bob Kalo is one of his professors. And all the stories he's done, it's all about this passion for like, who are we as veterans? And maybe we don't get seen. I want to make sure it's told correctly by the people who've been there and the people who've done it.